After 607 days, the Fiber Backpack is finally done. Well, sort of. Let me run you through the wild week I just had at the factory in Vietnam. Then after that, I'm gonna give you a close look at some of the changes that we made. I'm gonna let you know which fabric I'm picking, whether it's the Kodra nylon or the waxed canvas. And then I'm gonna give you an updated timeline for when we plan to launch. But first, roll that Vietnam footage. Okay, I'm in the sample room at the Sang and it feels good to be back. Our goal for the week is to build two new Fyro samples. One from 330D Kodra nylon, which we used on our most previous sample, and one from a new black waxed canvas. And just as importantly, both of these samples would have some crucial updates made, including adding our new lining, testing our new lid mold, increasing the capacity of the bag, and dozens more things. By the time I got there, the specialists at the factory had already cut the patterns and were working on the tech compartment and the front compartment that we call the hatch. In the hatch, we're testing out a few different things, such as lining the compartment with a high quality microfiber fabric, and also adding a slight curve to the top zippered pocket. Reason being, when the bag's fully really packed out and get a little bit tight in there, so we think adding a bit of curvature will just help to give that pocket a little bit more volume and opening and closing when the bag's packed out. While the specialists did their thing, Luke and I focused on seeing which hardware would work best with the fabrics we're using on the bag. But not everything was going smoothly as we were having some difficulties with the lid, which is easily the most complicated part of the bag. It might seem like this thing is easy to make, but let me tell you, we've gone through dozens of variations to get where we are now. But one thing I love about working with Bagme is just the whole team. Luke, Lin, Chow, and Quang are all masters at what they do. For example, during discussions about the lid, Quang had an idea for a solution, and he just darted upstairs cut some fabric, went back downstairs, and just started rocking the sewing machine. This man's a backpack making ninja. Quang came up with a solution that made the lid look better right away, and also made it easier to recreate in production so that there's less potential mistakes on the factory line. Needless to say, Luke and I were impressed. Day one over and I am pretty drained. It was crazy in the best way possible. We got so much done. I'm gonna smash my pho, pass the F out, and I'll see you tomorrow. Day two, let's go. We're hitting the ground running right now. We're working on the shoulder straps and finishing the front hatch of the backpack. I'm really stoked about what we're doing with the comfort of this bag, because as you know, I've reviewed a lot of bags, right? And like, there's a lot of really cool looking bags. You're like, yo, that bag's sick. And then you wear it and you're like, that bag's not comfortable. I'm never putting it on my freaking body again. So we don't want that to happen. I want this bag to feel like a cloud on your shoulders and back. So we've settled right here with our new uh, shoulder strap combo. You can see we've got EVA on the front. That helps to give the shoulder straps some comfort and to give the shoulder straps some structure, right? You don't want them like crinkling into themselves. And then on the flip side, we have the actual foam and the foam is the part that actually lays on your shoulder. We've also been putting a ton of time into figuring out how to make the bag self-stand. Don't get me wrong, the easy solution is to deck it out with padding, for example, like the Nomadic backpack, but then it will weigh four plus pounds, which we don't want to do. So while we were looking for a solution for the bag to stand better, the sampling specialists kept pushing forward, finishing the hatch and getting started on the back panel. Day two was pretty crazy. There's a lot of moving parts, so you just gotta make sure that you're keeping an eye out so nothing slips through the cracks. I spent a lot of time in Ho Chi Minh, but never right before Lunar New Year. It's pretty cool, they got the whole place lit up. There's decorations everywhere. The city's got a vibe to it right now, which I'm, I'm really enjoying. I will say though, what I'm not enjoying as much is my helmet. I thought last, uh, last visit's helmet was a lot cooler. This guy right there. Gotta talk to my motorcycle renting company. Set up their game. All right, back at the sample room, and today we've actually got three specialists on the Fyro bag. We got one station, two station, three station. And basically at this point, we're just getting closer to being able to, being able to put the bag together, right? So over here, we're working on the middle section where the expansion zipper is. Um, here you can see we're working on the front of the bag. This is the front panel, and then we've got the actual hatch compartment right there. And then the gentleman behind me, and then the gentleman behind me, he's working on the new and improved handle right now, lids, um, and then he's gonna work on the back panel. And then once that's all done, we can just start sewing it all together, tying it all together. We're getting there. So one of the fabrics I'm most excited about with the fire bag is this right here. It's a silicone leather. 
and it looks and feels like a real leather, cheaper price, but without compromising the durability. It's not gonna peel, it's not gonna tear. I mean, it is strong as I love seeing all the parts like being made separately, but it gets really exciting once they start getting sewn together. Cause like, oh, that's a backpack. That, that's my backpack. And you can see right now what he's working on. We got the shoulder straps, the top handle, and the back panel all separately finished. And now we're combining them as one. Now, another thing that we're working on with this new sample is increasing the depth and capacity of the front compartment. Last sample was like two liters, I think. So we added some more dimensions, a couple of MMs on either side, and we just filled it up and then we measure it. And we actually got a full four liters for the front compartment this time. And I gotta say like, one of the coolest things that I'm learning through all this is how the specialists in the sample room are trying to optimize the production process, right? These specialists behind me, they're the most experienced that work at this factory, right? There's a reason they're in the sample room because they're not just trying to make the sexiest backpack that they can. They're trying to do it in a way that solves every little potential problem to then optimize it. So when we put in a big order for Fyro bags, the people on the production line, those specialists just have a little bit easier of a way to do it, right? So it's awesome not just to see the process of making the bag, but also making the bag's production process as simple as possible. It's, it's, it's like, it's really impressive. These guys are, are freaking rock stars. All right, we're kicking off the day with a bang. Guns blazing, sixth gear. The whole Bag Me team is here and we're just go, go, go. Starting with the lid. And it's funny, because when we first started this bag, I was like, that lid looks gonna, it's awesome. It's gonna be so easy to make. It's not, it's taken a lot of R&D to find the right materials, the right fabrics, the right way to stitch it, the right way to do all these different things to it. But we think we found a solution. We're gonna be testing out a few other things, trying to sew it in the right way to make it look as sexy as possible while still being as durable and functional as possible. It's a hard intersection to meet. Let's see how it goes. So the sampling process is actually moving a lot faster than we thought. You can see right here, like the bag's almost done. We've got the shoulder straps, back panel, tech compartment, and in the middle, the bag's inside out so we can then sew the front of the bag, which is being worked on. Keep dropping my damn microphone. So you can see it's inside out right now because the last thing we have to do is sew on the front which this young lady, this specialist right over here is working on. You can see she's got the lid on there. We got the hatch. She's gonna attach that to the front, the larger front section. And then uh, we got a backpack. I'm really loving this laptop sleeve. It's really amazing. But it really looks high quality, right? With the, um, with the extra yeah. padding behind. Hell yeah. Well, I think now because this is looking so awesome here, I actually think we should drop the laptop sleeve down a couple of centimeters and really make a better presentation of this really nice like it looks like a prestige car seat or something. Yeah, well right now we have five centimeters at the bottom of the laptop sleeve. That's the false bottom, right? Yeah, okay. but actually I think three centimeters is gonna be enough because we've actually put some extra foam in this bottom panel right here. How much foam? Um, I think there's five millimeters, okay. like a nice five millimeter strip. So this with the foam at the bottom and a three centimeter buffer, I think is enough. Perfect. And if, if the laptop sleeve is too high, the bag's probably gonna have more trouble self-standing, right? And then the beauty of doing that is, is that we get to present this awesome laptop sleeve like yeah. a lot more because by the time that's in the bag, this is gonna close up a bit too much like this. And if we can do this, drop this down, move that logo down a little bit. Dude, that is that is a sexy laptop sleeve. Ooh, here we have the wax canvas version. The first one that's gonna be done. A little bit of a heritage style mixed with like the modern techie elements. That fusion is mm -hmm. This is gonna be a hard choice picking the, the final fabric. Ah, the wax canvas looks good. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're getting these last few parts stitched together. It's looking like a backpack finally. This is the birth of Fyro. It's about to really happen. Man, this has been uh, almost two years in the making. We're about to have basically our final sample. Yeah, baby. And we're rocking and rolling. That custom lining is trippy, dude. Talk about lush. That is lush as <laughs> Oof. The silicone on that top handle. It's the little things, you know, just take it to the next level. Oh, that's not even a little thing, that's a big thing. Every time you grab this handle, you're just gonna be like, oh. Okay, so it's uh, 4.15 on Friday. You can see right here, we've got the whole back panel, we've got the shoulder straps, the tech compartment, and the middle of the bag, it's inside out. This gentleman right here just added all the binding. Luke, tell me what the binding is for. 
Bunny is basically to hide the raw seams of the fabric mm -hmm. uh -huh. and to protect it basically. So what he said, it hides the raw seams and it provides protection. And it's just exciting when the binding is being applied because it means we're at that home stretch. We're almost at the end. So this is the back side of the main compartment. We drop these pockets down by two centimeters for the bulkier bits of gear. For me, this is where my mouse is going, computer charger, things like that. And you can see when I flip the bag inside out, we still got to apply the front. Now they actually apply the front when the bag is flipped inside out, it's easier. And then they just sort of pop it open and the bag is done. We should be ready in a, in a few minutes. Let's go. We weren't able to completely finish both samples before the end of Friday, but we did finish enough of the waxed canvas sample for me to take it over the weekend to evaluate. Luke and I met up on Saturday to take a closer look at the bag and determine where we were at. Oh, well, the other thing, big thing is um, what we got going on at the bottom. First of all, I'm so stoked about the standing. This is strong like ox. Um, and just reducing the, the depth will yeah, of how, how much are we have to see? Of course. No, I understand. Bigger base equals better stand. We totally get that. Too. And also, I ate as much pho as my body could handle. All right, today's the final day. I'm at the Sang sample room. We got, you know, just a handful of hours left to get these two samples done so I can bring them on my flight to Hong Kong tomorrow. Let's see what the deal is. Things are looking good. So as you can see, the semi-finished wax canvas sample is right over there. I was testing it out over the weekend, and then the semi, semi, semi finished uh, nylon samples right here. This is still need to be sewn together. The front needs to be put on it. You can see right over there, we got the front of the bag. So this one's probably a few hours away, but we should be able to hit this deadline, no problem. Ooh, very exciting. We're now working on the water bottle holder. Also, thank you to the community. Love you guys. You gave me the idea to make it removable, right? Because originally it was just stowable. You could zip it away. But then you guys were like, why not be able to zip it off as well? And I'm like, that's absolutely freaking brilliant. But instead of zipping it off, we're doing like a daisy chain connection, sort of like the sternum straps. So the design language is better. It's easier to remove and it's more durable, we think. So that's what we're working on right now. We added a few more elements to the water bottle holder, including a pull tab, making it easier to open it and a little bit of depth in the bottom for longer water bottles, umbrellas, so on and so on. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So interesting development. I love being in the sample room because we are always presented with new problems and we got to figure out solutions on the fly. And one problem that we've had since day one with this bag is the fact that it's a self-standing bag, but it's also clamshell. And those two things don't always go hand in hand together. We've kind of had this conflict where it just, it just didn't feel right. So we were just analyzing the bag standing. We got some puckering issues in the bottom and how that works with the clamshell. And then someone from the bag me team, I think Quang was like, yo, let's try and throw some gussets on the bag. Hey Richard. And the gussets in essence will limit the bag's opening. It will not be clamshell anymore, but it feels like it's going to be a significantly better fit with the self standing feature of the bag. But theory is one thing. Actuality is a different thing. Let's put it on the bag and see how it works. Over the last few hours, the team finalized the water bottle holders, finished the binding, measured the liters, and cleaned the bags so they looked brand spanking new. Holy freaking moly. We did it. I got the polycarbonate 330D Koja version and the wax canvas version. Both are ready and I'm gonna test them out in Hong Kong, which uh, I got a flight that's leaving in like three hours. So I gotta run, but I'm gonna test these bags out in the process. We're gonna talk pros, cons, and I'm gonna run you through all the specific changes so you can see how we got to this newest version of the bag. I see you in Hong Kong. All right, so now I'm back at my studio in Hong Kong. Let's break down the updated versions of the Fyro bag so you can see what changes we made from the previous sample. And then I'm gonna tell you which fabric I picked and let you know the details of our timeline moving forward. All right, let's compare the last sample to the current sample. And I'm gonna use the Kodra nylon version because the previous sample was also Kodra nylon just so it's easier to kind of compare and contrast. We changed the interior lining from a ripstop kind of boring gray to our custom honeycomb gray with those neon orange lines cutting through it. We also added more depth. The previous version was 19 liters and the current version is 22 liters. To be honest, this is kind of like a more challenging thing for me because I love the sleek and sexiness of the previous model. But at the end of the day, you know, 
carry habits have changed and 21, 22 liters is the standard EDC these days and that's what the community wants. I'm listening to y'all. And just for me carrying it around the past few days, that three liters of extra capacity goes a long way. We completely redesigned the shoulder straps. The old version were very minimalist, but on the new version, we added these cuts at the top where there's the double bonded Lycra for increased comfort, added a Hypalon external lash point. And instead of putting the shoulder strap on this piping right here, which we were told from some members in the focus group was uncomfortable, we've now hidden the sternum strap in this pocket right there. And one thing to note as well, we're still kind of playing with the branding. Don't worry, we're not gonna have a metal logo on the front and on the back. It's gonna be one or the other. I prefer on the shoulder strap with a nice clean front. We're also not sold on the copper color yet. For instance, on the canvas sample, you can see we've got like this silver, copper-ish version. I think that this one's actually my favorite. But we've also got the matte black version on the previous sample. So any thoughts that you guys have on metal logo branding, let me know in the comments below. We also perfected the stowable water bottle solution. The previous one could stow away, but was not completely detachable. But the new version stows away. We added a Hypalon pull tab for easier access. And you can see it's completely detachable with the daisy chain system in the hidden back pocket. And for reference, this is what the water bottle holder looks like once it's completely removed. The community was so jazzed up about this removable water bottle idea and I, I freaking love it as well. This is going to allow you to increase the lifespan of your backpack. Even when the elasticity dies, you can just grab another one. And I also didn't really quite clarify last time. I had a lot of weird questions. People were like, oh, the water bottle holder, there's no bottom. There is. Let me just make sure that we're all on the same page of what this is. You can see at the bottom right there that the water bottle is perfectly in place. And then to attach the water bottle holder in real time, you just clip in to these clips right here. And let me use a bigger water bottle, really show you what we're dealing with here. I got a one liter Yeti, Hypalon pull tab, allows you to pop the water bottle in there. You can see the bottom clearly covered and that the water bottle itself ain't going nowhere. And then from the old to the new, you can see that we kind of greatly improved its ability to self-stand. This one's kind of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and just a little bit of, a little bit of that, it does a little, it just, it doesn't stand up as straight as the new version. But on that note, we made a big change. One that I'm really stoked about. So the previous version, and every version of this bag before, was a clamshell style opening, which in theory sounds awesome. But the truth is, that clamshell style opening and self-standing bag don't really work hand in hand very well. But as you can see that every time you open this bag, it sort of creates a fold there, which just bends that part and it just, it just clashes, dude. It's not supposed to be both. So now we've ixnade the clamshell and added gussets. As you can see, the gussets open large enough to give you plenty of access into the main compartment but it's just about like doing what's right for the bag. It's self-standing. The gussets now help it self-stand. You can now like put the bag on the table or on the floor and open it up and it still self-stands. Kind of like this whole personal assistant vibe that we've been going for with the Fyro bag. A few more changes on the previous version. The top handle was a little small and just kind of basic nylon webbing. But on the new version, we made the top handle a bit bigger, a bit wider, and we've lined it with this silicone material that I'm absolutely freaking crazy about. And you can see we also added the laptop lock, which to lock, you just unbuckle the zipper right here. You weave it in and snap it into place. But the problem is that we made the Hypalon uh, locking mechanism too tight. So the actual zipper puller does not fit through, but it'll be fixed in the next sample, I hope. It will, it will, I hope. A few more quick changes. On the top panel above the lid, we reintroduced the dual stitches. We just thought it was a better look and the previous top panel was just kind of an eyesore. It didn't work with the direction and the design of the bag. The previous sample's lid was made from EVA foam and we had difficulty opening it due to too much padding above it. And the new lid is made from a mold that's significantly more durable. You can pop it inside, pop it out. It's not gonna get damaged. And we reduced the padding above it a little bit, therefore ensuring that you can get a full opening experience. And then in the hatch, we made these pockets slightly bigger so it can fit a B7 size notebook and or a passport. And we increased the depth by two liters. This was about 1.5-ish liters of space. And this is about 3.5 liters. But the moment you've all been waiting for. Hey, Wax Canvas, welcome back. Hey, Kodra, who's gonna be the winner? Cause I've made my decision. And let me tell you, it was really difficult. 
But as you might guess at this point, we're going to say maybe see you later wax canvas and we're going strong with the Kodra 330D polycarbonate nylon. Here's why. So this is the wax canvas and this is the Kodra and they both look just as good in my opinion. In fact, the wax canvas could even look slightly better. But not all wax canvases are made the exact same way. And while this one's super premium, it definitely had a tendency to be quite the dust and hair magnet. Versus the Kodra, it has a little bit more of a drapier look and feel to it. And it's just so much less of a dust and hair magnet. And I get it, like wax canvas is a lifestyle, right? If you love wax canvas, you're like, I don't give a flying F about the dirt and the hair. I just want me some wax canvas, which I totally respect. But having responded to every comment that I've ever received in this YouTube channel, I know there's a few things that when you get a bag that will drive you crazy enough as to where you never want to use it again. And one of those things is the bag being a dirt and hair magnet. I've read so many comments on this. It's just one of those things that just, it, it's, it's a deal breaker after a certain point of time for a lot of people. That's the second biggest thing and the first biggest thing is weight. So that's why I promised myself I would not have a bag that is a dirt magnet and I would not have a bag that's super heavy. And for those reasons, we're going with the Kodra. It's actually lighter. This version weighs 2.6 pounds and this version weighs 2.7 pounds. And the Kodra is a significantly less of a hair and dirt magnet. We might see you again, wax cameras in the near future, but for now, enjoy retirement. What do you think about the fabric choice? Cause here's the deal, like, some people said I shouldn't have shown anyone the fabric options, right? That I should have just made a decision and then brought it to market like that. Cause like, dude, if you show wax canvas and people like the wax canvas and you don't pick the wax canvas, the people are gonna be mad at you. And I assume that some people out there are probably like, no, the wax canvas was better. But like my whole goal of this was to show you the reality of what it actually takes to build a backpack. And when you're building a backpack, you're gonna try different materials. And most of the time, you're just gonna have to pick one. Sure, we can keep testing, we can try this bag with an X-Pack and a ballistic nylon and more and more, but ultimately, you just gotta kinda make a decision and go with it. And this 330D Kodra, like from the second that I saw it, I knew it was Spyro. I love how it's this sort of techie yet drapey and traditional look to it at the same time. It's stupid weather resistant. And I hope that like seeing the process of us trying all these different materials was interesting. And I wanna hear what you gotta say in the comments below. Did I make the right choice? Let me know. So listen, while the Fyro bag is technically done, there's always things that need to be tuned up, right? And even once it's done done, it's never done done. That's why there's the Air Travel Pack 3 and the iPhone 15. You're always iterating and making improvements. So let me tell you what we're going to be trying to improve from this sample to the next and when we're gonna launch. As I mentioned, the bag is basically a functional masterpiece, but we wanna tighten up the aesthetic a little bit and that includes maybe sexifying the lid, adding the logo here, hopefully fixing up a little bit of the puckering issues, getting a finalized logo placement, and then just hopefully helping itself stand a little bit better and also finalizing the size. We're at 22 right now. I might take it down to 21 liters. Kind of splitting hairs after a certain point, but I still gotta weigh the pros and cons and make a decision there. But if you're thinking to yourself, Aaron, that is not a lot of changes. That's like nothing. You're totally right. And that's why we're about a month and a half to two and a half months away from launching the Fyro bag officially on Kickstarter. Which is freaking crazy. It's, it's happening. This is really happening. This timeline is obviously with the expectation that nothing else goes wrong. There's a few things that are out of my hands right now that could delay it further, but I'm praying they don't happen. We'll see in the next few weeks, but I feel confident that two months is gonna be no problem. And like, I just feel like it's ready. Like, I didn't feel this way four months ago or six months ago or one month ago. Right now, I just know it's ready. It's gonna hit the market. We're a few months away, which means like, <laughs> It's about to get real, but I'm really excited. If you're still here, I just wanna say thank you so much for following this journey, supporting me the whole time. If you're new here and you're still here, be sure to check out the first link in the description below because that's where you'll find out more information about the Building a Backpack project. You'll be signed up to the email list. You'll get notifications for when the Kickstarter is launching so you can lock in the absolute best price. And if you haven't yet, let me know in the comments below. I wanna hear what you gotta say either about the branding. Remember, I like this silver. I think this silver logo looks pretty freaking sick. And I also wanna hear your opinion on the, uh, on the materials. Maybe your thoughts on the internal lining. Go crazy. I just wanna hear what you gotta say. I'm stoked. I hope you're stoked. Crazy things are coming. I couldn't be more excited. All right, thank you so much for watching. My name's Aaron. This is Nomad's Nation. This is about to be Fyro. And, <laughs> oh, my mind's blown.
and thank you so much for watching.